know, I think of uh, writing as a uh, form of storytelling, and I think stories uh, nurture communities and families and schools as much as, as food does. I think we need stories just as we need food. I think of everything that you've contributed uh, to this beautiful little chapbook as, as a story for your community. So when you come up and read, think about it not so much about you, although I certainly congratulate each and every one of the winners and those who wrote good things that, that weren't selected, but it's really about uh, giving a gift back to your community. So. When you read, uh, Kelly's going to adjust the microphone for you at whatever level you need. This is the kindest audience that you're ever likely to get to perform to. So relax and uh, and read. Uh, give it your give it. Be proud of your work and give it your best shot. Okay, this is just a short poem I actually wrote for my children many years ago and uh, have reworked it a little bit. It's called Lullaby. Tonight the lonely moon sails down through the rain. It lands on the wind, spinning threads of light through shy branches and wood spider webs and down to the whispery lake. Then the moon rolls gently through water, through ducks softly sweeping and the silver turtle sleeping. Down, down, down into your dreams the moonlight falls, becomes a thousand stars wished upon, a small secret kept. Quiet. There is a quietness in deep fog when everything has disappeared. There is a kind of quiet in an empty house, the old secrets undisturbed. There is a quietness in a snowflake floating down in the silent night. There is a kind of quiet in spring dew as it rests on the green grass. There is a quietness in a hot summer day warming all the people. There is a kind of quiet in an autumn leaf falling from a treetop. Sideways. Twelve American flags ripped and ragged old unpainted broken fence, shattered windows overgrown with weeds, things you see walking down an alley, a single violet rose dangling from its stem, just one old tire missing a car, a child's favorite toys scattered without a yard, things you see walking down an alley. You might feel uneasy and maybe a little guilty, looking at a life no one should have to live. And in this country of milk and honey, where poverty is in movies and those famous actors get paid millions, it's no wonder that those flags are hanging sideways. My surgeon, what was she doing last night? Did she sleep well? Did she dream? Did she relish her favorite meal? Did she fast? Did her husband encircle her in an embrace at bedtime, look her straight in the eye, and tell her she is a strong woman, a goddess at her craft? And this morning, as I drove through the blue-tinged fog to the ballot box, for it is election day and the day of the dead, did she notice how beautiful the sliver of moon was, incised against the deep black and blue backdrop of night? A luminescent crescent, perfect as a scar. Life has been kind of crazy busy for many years with three children, and um, we've lived on our place for about 12 years, and it seems like the last year or so, things have slowed down a bit and I'm noticing the birds on the porch. And it's been wonderful to just watch them. And I was inspired by a chickadee. Undone. Morning light warms the worn porch floorboards where the feral cats have been fed. In a stock still tree, a small chickadee waits, sheltered by a veil of pine bough. She lifts her dusky hood like a careful novitiate and wills her gray feathered sphere to open and glide, trusting the air to carry her. She lands on twig feet and floats like a downy dandelion head in a weightless, effortless spring 
stopping to gather swift and clipped, gravelly bits of leftover food with a thin yellowed beak. Shiny like obsidian, her eyes flit about toward the window pane where my measured breaths form halos of moisture on the glass between us. Shy and wary, she steals one quick hasty tap before, whisking away, pulling the longing in my heart like a thread unraveling. Mm -hmm.